But I want to eventually explore all of these. It is always nice from, a, from an ethical and legal point of view, looking at things that might or might not have monamine oxidase inhibition, in that if they are clinically active, they might be or they might not be antidepressants. And antidepressants in no way compromises any research work because it is only illegal to look for psychedelics, which I do not look for. I look for antidepressants. And this takes care very nicely of some aspects of, of legal morality. Uh, so... Uh, I want to look at these, these, this kind of where I am. This is the, the, the shape of the arrow, A to B arrow right now. I want to look at these eight compounds and harmine harmaline as monamine oxidase inhibitors as clues to where enzymatic and biological activity might lie. And I don't know where I'm going to find the most. They've never been compared with one another. About four of them have been run, three on one system, two on another system. They cannot, results cannot be compared. I want all ten on the same system so the results are directly comparable to one another. They can be compared and evaluated. I want very much to um, uh, explore these materials pharmacologically and I will continue what, doing what I am already doing. I think a lot of these things can be dehydrogenated de to the totally aromatic dehydro and methylquotylated. I think, for example, an area of chemical modification uh, oh, ballad, I can show it on this. Where you have two methoxy groups in a row, take one of them off. You have methoxyhydroxy, this area of vanillin, the isovanillin, the hydroxymethoxy metabolites of, of uh, epinephrine, norepinephrine, all these goodies, uh, are, lie in this general area. But one says, well, the hydroxy group has to be on the molecule, so it will get into the brain. But if the hydroxy has to be off, you can't have a bare hydroxy. But the hydroxy is next to a methoxy, it's not bare. It's, it's, it's compromised. And there are things that contain free hydroxy groups that do get in the brain if they are protected from getting too associated with water. An example, psilocin. Asoclacin has a bare hydroxy group, yet it's, it's active as such orally, but it is associated with a very strong base, and so you have an internal salt, and that salt may be what protects it. The same thing is totally doable in the area of the tetrahydroisoquinolins. And then one last point I want to pursue is a concept of, uh, that's brought out in the discussions of, of ayahuasca, in which you might have materials such as these that are, should be active and would be active if they're not deaminated. And a cactus, these are the upper ones at least from a cactus, and cactus components that themselves may not be active but may inhibit that deamination. So it's exactly the parallel to ayahuasca that is very possible in a cactus. You could have a phenethylamine that would not normally be active, but it is active because in the same cactus there happens to be a tetraisoquinolin that inhibits the inactivation of the phenethylamine. So in essence, you have an internal ayahuasca. This is, this is a doable thing, a believable thing. And what is really provocative is that um, if you have that combination uh, in there, you have a mixture of compounds that may show activity, but neither one of the compounds alone would show any activity. So it's, a, it's an example of search for what is in a cactus, find out something in there, is it active, and fail to find activity is not necessarily a discouragement because it may be only in combination that it's active. Therefore, the plant may be active, but the components of the plant are not. So this is kind of what I wanted to do. I wanted to bring you a, a report of what's going on, not where it's going to go. I don't know where it's going to go, but how I'm going to explore getting to wherever it's going to go, and uh, let that be kind of the, 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 the bottom line to the title of, of the talk. And I really do believe that this whole process of getting uh, to a, a, a target rather than achieving a target uh, is a lot more exciting. Thank you very much. I think we have time for questions uh, a little bit, so and uh, Dr. Shulgin would be happy to answer them. Uh, try to answer them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, from the microphone, please. Sorry, I'm too short. Um, my brief statement is that you've certainly given me a new dimension um, to think about in uh, Island by Huxley, the fact that he named one of the characters Joe Aldehyde, because I was only familiar with it um, in the perfume industry. Uh, I had never thought of him uh, related to psychoactive chemicals. But my question is, uh, I know my field is more inorganic chemistry, my interest, but uh, with cannabis... In the U.S. generally, it's thought that the THC is the only active compound in cannabis. And I was wondering, have there been any studies to find there's, what, 200-something other alkaloids in cannabis? Um, and it's been proven that Marinol, the isolated, doesn't work as well. Has anybody done any research on 
all these other ones. Okay. Uh, let me go back kind of in the middle of the question back toward the first. One thing you termed alkaloids. Be cautious. There are not alkaloids in cannabis. It is an alkaloidless plant, at least from the point of view of its activity. These materials are hydrocarbon. They are actually ethers. Uh, and they're terpenase, terpene-like, but they are not alkaloids. Is THC the only active compound? Absolutely not. There are other materials in there that are known to be active, but the clinical studies in man have not, to a large measure, been successfully done. Yeah, that's At, my question. Is yeah, the, they're in animals, yes. Uh, and mm-hmm. there's no question but what they will con- contribute, in my mind, at one level or another, to the overall action of the plant. To a study of the action of THC in isolation is a very unnatural thing to do. THC of marinol is actually uh, synthesized. It doesn't it's... come from the plant, although there's work in Holland in obtaining it from the plant in a competitive way. Isn't but... it even hexahydrocannabinol? It's a separate... Sorry? It's hexahydrocannabinol, right? It's a separate... Well, te- the, the tetrahydro is, it has one double bond. The hexahydro has been studied in animals. I don't remember the results of the study. I don't believe it's found in the plant. But there are many variations of the double bond position and variations of the ring integrity that are common components of the plant. And many have been studied in animal studies. I do not know of clinical studies in men. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, you keep working on cactus oh, and poppies and all. <laughs> Good. Is there a microphone? Good. Good. I thank you very, very much.